Nick Peterson, an experienced surfer from San Diego, California, paddled out into the waves as the sun was setting over the clear waters of the Pacific Ocean. He thought this would be just another normal surfing session. He had no idea that he was about to be attacked by a shark so badly that it would change the rest of his life. In just a few seconds, a huge great white shark came out of the water, grabbed his leg and pulled him under. He was fighting for his life. This is the scary story of how Nick Peterson met one of the ocean's most dangerous predators. So be sure to watch all the way through and don't forget to subscribe our channel. You can also click the bell icon for more such updates. Let's begin. Many people think that great white sharks are the top predators in the open ocean. Their torpedo shaped bodies give them the speed and power they need to swim up to 57 kilometers per hour, which they use to quickly catch prey. Ambush hunters using surprising force to kill prey that doesn't see them coming. Adult great white sharks can live up to 30 years, growing up to 20 feet long and weighing up to 6,600 pounds on average. The largest recorded great white shark was 23 feet long and weighed 2.5 tons. Great white sharks have razor sharp teeth that can grow to be over six and a half inches long. They are known to be opportunistic predators, which means they eat whatever they can get their hands on. Nick Peterson, aged 18, was with three friends 300 meters from the shore at West Beach in South Australia. The sky was clear and cloudless, making it a great day for surfing. Surfing is a water sport that combines the best of both worlds. It was a hot day and everyone in the ocean was trying to cool off. Nick's friends Ty Wheeler, Adam Ferreni and Andrew Tomlin, both teenagers from Adelaide's western suburbs, had been swimming and taking turns on surfboards for half an hour while having fun. Little did they know that a full-grown great white shark, almost six meters long, with a viciousness to match its size, was stalking the group from a distance, likely studying them to find out the easiest target and possibly waiting for an opportunity to strike a large fish. Nick and his fans were enjoying their hobby in an area where sheriffs were often seen. About three weeks before the incident, two men in a boat were bumped by a five meter white shark while fishing 10 kilometers off the coast of St. Kilda, north of Adelaide. The next day, a shark of the same size terrorized fishermen off North Haven before making swimmers leave the water. On December 2nd, a shark was seen in the distance in Gulf St. Vincent. Gary Biddle from the Grain Sur Life Saving Club said that he saw a white shark swim under his boat while it was out on the water at Grange the weekend before this disaster. Lenka Merselkova, a visitor from the Czech Republic, came upon a rather terrifying sight. A massive black dorsal fin located approximately 30 meters from the shore. At first, she was under the impression that it was a dolphin, and as a result, she snapped a picture of it just as one of her companions was reboarding the boat. Nick was ecstatic and leapt joyfully into the sea, but shortly after that, a terrible thing occurred. Nick was taken aback when, the moment his body impacted the water, a massive moss stuffed with razor sharp teeth charged at him with an amount of force that was incomprehensibly strong. As soon as Nick emerged from the water, the man with the mouthful of fangs grabbed him by the left shoulder and brutally shook him around, attempting to pull large sections of his body off him. Nick was in a great deal of discomfort, and his companions attempted to save him by striking the shark with their paddles. Nonetheless, it was obvious that the shark would continue to swim around and submerge with Nick still in its jaws for a number of times, until finally diving with Nick still in its jaws for the final time. Nick had been absent for a moment, but before his friend could figure out what transpired, Nick returned to the surface and his friend turned to look at him. Nick had returned to the surface before his friend could figure out what had occurred. They were all rendered speechless by what they had just witnessed. Nick was hovering in mid-air with his face down. He was not moving and his bottom half was missing. Nick's body was floating in a pool of blood with his internal organs torn to shreds around it. Immediately following the assault, Nick's pals ran in the direction of the south, towards the boat ramp at Adelaide Shores. A few minutes later, one of the teenagers ran up the beach crying and yelled at other swimmers to get out of the water. When some time had passed, it was reported that a great white shark with a length of 14 and a half feet had been observed nibbling on Nick's body. 
This took place while there were hundreds of people on the beach, and after a thorough beach and sea surge, all that was left of Nick Peterson were two smears of his blood. This is due to the fact that lung tissue is full of air, which makes it buoyant and allows it to rise swiftly to the surface in the event that a person dies from an attack rather than drowning. This enables rescue workers to determine what occurred even when there are no witnesses. Nick's pal Ty Wheeler has a clear memory of the day that everything changed. He stated that we decided to turn the boat around and the experience was so enchanted that we chose to get closer to them. It is hypothesized that one of the so-called dolphins was involved. Nick's body was literally cut in half within a few seconds, and then a second shark, a smaller one, stepped in to finish eating what was left of it. During the course of time, the water close to the beach became stained with blood and was full of unidentified body parts. Some of these parts eventually washed up on the shore. Following the incident, police closed many beaches in the area and began scouring the area by air and water around 3.30 p.m. In addition to this, they dispatched patrols along the beaches to inform residents of what had recently taken place. As was noted earlier, initial speculation suggested that the attack was carried out by a pair of sharks. It was said that these sharks measured between 4.5 and 5 meters in length. However, additional research revealed that the attack was carried out by a single shark measuring between 5 and 6 meters in length. Experts in the area speculated that it was most likely the same shark that had been spotted in recent weeks along the beaches of Adeline. The great white shark is a species that is protected under Australian law. It should come as no surprise that two of Nick's pals were forced to seek treatment for their mental health after enduring a dreadful tragedy that may never completely heal or leave their memories. Even so, Nick Peterson's passing serves as a sobering reminder that sharks are an inherent part of this natural environment and that people shouldn't stand in their way when they're attempting to locate a source of sustenance. Even though shark attacks are uncommon, you should never get too comfortable in shark territory, especially if you aren't familiar with the region where you are swimming or surfing. When swimming in waters that are known to be frequented by sharks, you should always be aware of your surroundings and exercise extreme caution. If you don't, you run the risk of becoming an unrecognizable mass without any discernible form. That's it for today. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to share and press the bell icon for more regular updates.